Hey. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to the Red Nose Cyber School of Clowning. I'm glad you found this channel. This tells me that um, you've been looking at clowning and wondering how you can become a professional clown. So I've decided after going through the internet and not finding a lot of clowning tutorials except for how to put on makeup or you know the odd magic trick a little bit here and there but really there's no in-depth uh, tutorials on how to become a professional clown so let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get underway my name is Willie well I was actually born William but I prefer Willie and I've been clowning professionally for over 40 years. I started off as a very young runaway street busker and um, worked my way up running my own business, uh, clowning in different venues and genres and such. A lot of trial and error, a lot of practice. I still practice quite often. I still enjoy street busking in between gigs. But I started in 1971 in Victoria, British Columbia. Now, back in 1971, I was one of them uh, hitchhiking, uh, kind of hippie type uh, at the end of the hippie era. Our Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau gave us all free license just to go and do whatever we wanted to do, living from hostel to hostel. But one thing I noticed about living from hostel to hostel is a lot of times my pockets would be empty of the jingle, jingle, jingle of necessary coinage to get a bite to eat at a McDonald's or such. So, one day I'm walking down the main drag of Victoria and I come up to the Inner Harbor across from the Empress Hotel. You know, if you've ever been out there, you'll know it's such a beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah, it's just, and it's full of buskers. Well, one day, I had no clue what busking was, but one day I saw this guy doing some mime right beside or kind of in front of James Cook's statue in Victoria. And he was kind of getting his way out of an invisible box and he was pulling himself along an invisible rope and doing all this really kind of cool stuff. But re really amazed me the most is people were throwing money into his hat. And I'm looking at the money in that hat going, that's a quarter pounder. I got to get into this action. So me being a know-it-all that I was at that young age, I ran over to your nearest joke store and I got myself some white cheap grease paint stick pencil stuff that you'd use at Halloween and crayoned my face into white. And I went down and tried to mime. It was a sad, sad affair. I gotta tell you, mime is such a disciplined art. I have so much respect for people like Marcel, Marceau. The techniques are amazing. I didn't have it. But I'm thinking I still gotta make some money here somehow. And I've got this Halloween kit full of makeup that I got at the joke store. Spent the whole five bucks. So I snuck into the Empress Hotel and went downstairs in their public washroom there and lo and behold I got my face into the mirror and started putting makeup all over my face and I come up with, <coughs> excuse me, the worst hobo clown makeup in the world. Now I had previously managed to find me a little puppet, it was called a minky. It was a monkey that kind of wrapped around your neck and it kind of velcroed together so you could have one hand up there and make the monkey kind of seem like it was real. Not that I was ever any good at being a puppeteer, but I had my plans made, my life destiny was set before me and nothing was going to get in my way. So I left the Empress Hotel, luckily security didn't see me, with my horrible clown makeup and my life aspirations. And across the street I went to the James Cook statue, former home of the mime, but he seemed to have moved out for a bit, so I took over. And I'm um, hiding behind the statue in my horrible clown makeup with my lack of knowledge about children, child psychology, and all that good stuff. And I see a mother pushing the baby carriage down the street. So I got right behind that statue I did. I was going to make the big bucks, you see. 
I even had lollipops. Well, I jumped out from behind that James Cook statue. Hey, kid. Well, that kid wasn't too happy with me, let me tell you. I scared the dickens out of that little boy. He started a wailing and a screaming. Well, then his mother decided to join the chorus. She was a wailing and a screaming, but not at the kid. She was giving me the dickens. Because I'd scared her kid. Well, it kind of dawned on me. Maybe I don't know at all. Maybe there's just a little bit more to this clown and then jumping around and acting a fool. So I took my embarrassed self over to the library the next morning. And Victoria's got a great, great library, I have to tell you. Not too far from the harbor. So I started getting books on clowning and I'd sit and I'd be reading and I'd be taking notes and I'd be practicing stuff. And eventually I started to get a hang of things a little bit. Not great, but enough to get by where I was starting to make a little bit of money just by twisting some balloons and smiling at people. I wasn't doing a whole lot, but I was making a little bit of money and I said, okay, maybe this is going to work out. Well, I did that for a few months and... Um, well, the next thing you know, there was a big uh, political strife in Victoria, B.C. Now, my real name, being Bill Bennett, happened to match the name of the Premier of British Columbia at the time. So I said, I'm going to pull a prank. Well, I went storming into the Parliament building there with my official William Bennett social insurance card. The minute security come up to me, I started yelling at him, you need to read my ID. Just because I'm in makeup, you got to know who you're working for. Well, that went over like a lead balloon, and I made it onto the news, but that got me a little bit of exposure. I got offered some work, picked up on that. Then over the years, I've taken various clown courses and trainings and hours and hours and thousands of hours of practicing working on makeup techniques, moving techniques, a little bit of magic, some balloon twistings, all the things that I do now. And it's a constant, constant rehearsal. But that's how we get to where we are today. I kind of did it the hard way, and I want to impart some of my learnings to you, so you'll have some tools to take with you while you embark on your clowning career. So, Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I have typed up some notes because I think it's imperative to um, have some guidelines to share with you. So here we go, folks. Again, I want to welcome you to the Red Nose Cyber Clown School. And my name is Willie. And like I mentioned, I've been clowning for 40 plus years. Often folks would ask me how I got involved in the clowning, and I'd just say, well, you know, it was a bit of study, some trial and error, lots of practice. Those were my prerequisites. And this would normally, you know, give the people enough that they'd be happy with the answer and they'd move on. But there was the odd one would say, really? It's that simple? What did you really do? What do you have to do? Can I get schooling? So... I always thought that was kind of awesome. I kind of take a little bit of pride when somebody asks me about my trade and sees it as being more than just being a fool. It makes me feel good inside. So this series of clown tutorials will lead the novice or even a the clown into a rewarding and fun film profession. And it is rewarding and it is fun. It's a lot of hard work, but the payoff is awesome. Now, whether you decide to work you know, in the party industry, doing birthday parties and such, or you wish to be involved in corporate affairs, or maybe a mixture of those two. There's a great business opportunity out there if you hone your skills. Okay, you can also look at working at fairs, you know, at carnivals. You can specialize in face painting. There's amazing face painting artists out there, and they make great money if you learn face painting and you're clowning you got a good chance of being successful. You know, maybe you want to make it to the big jobs. You want to make it to the three rings or even the one ring circus. Get a chance to entertain a large audience with slapstick and large, large movements and lots of fun and make the crowds yell and scream and laugh. 
working in a circus. While those jobs are out there, there's not many, and they're hard to come by, but if you work at it, you know, anything you dream can become a possibility if you're willing to put the work to it. And then there's stage clowning, which is a completely different genre altogether. Different stage presence as opposed to ring presence, you know, as opposed to one-on-one -on -one party presence and so on and so forth. There's a wide genre of clowning available for everybody who wants to study the trade. Now this course is going to be free. I'm not going to ask you for any money. Not going to tip my hat. I am going to ask you to please hit the subscribe button. Maybe give me a thumbs up like. Okay, I want this to really work out for you. But I'm hoping it kind of works for me as well. Okay, so you hitting the subscribe button just means you're a super awesome, cool person. And I thank you. Now, you know... During this course, I'm going to give you some assignments. I really, really need you to do these assignments. Please don't skip them. There are no shortcuts. I've had to do these assignments, and I found that they paid off. They helped me. Okay? So, do the assignments. They're all fun. You're going to love doing them. Okay? But they need to be done. They will enhance your growth. If you have comments you have questions and by all means i'm not the end all be all of clowning if you have suggestions or ideas send them my way down in the comments i promise you i'm going to respond let this learning process be a two-way street all right get a relationship going that'd be really good now you know during our adventure we will learn the clowning and makeup and pocket magic so on and so forth We'll deal with facial expressions, so I mentioned that. But now let's get down to clowning. We have all seen a typical clown in the parades. We've seen him at birthday parties, corporate picnics. You know that clown, he's got the big pink and red makeup with the white muzzle and the black or the red mouth, and he's got the baggy outfit on there and the boffy colored hair, and he's like, Hello, boys and girls, yada, 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 Okay. That's our typical idea of what a clown is. And I understand that, because he, he's actually called the Agust. And the Agust style of clowning is the most recognizable style, especially in North America, even though it did kind of start off in Europe. But we know the Agust clown as being the quintessential clown. But there are so many other styles of clowns. We have everything from tramp clowns to medical clowns to elder clowns. And I'm going to cover some of those before we get to our first assignment because I need you to think about which clown would you like to be. This is very important. Okay. Now, as I show you some of these pictures, I'm not doing a fancy video here. This is actually being done just off my iPhone and my uh, makeup room and uh, clowning office. But I did download some pictures from the internet so you can see the different styles of clowns. And I'll give a brief description of each style. And then later on, we'll go into depth. First of all, let's get to know who some of the players are in the clown, clown world, if you want to call it. Clown town, if you want to call it. So I'm going to show you the clown that I love the most. Aside from doing what I call my uh, therapeutic clown, notice no makeup. Most therapeutic clowns don't wear makeup. We work through our noses. Even this is a little bit bright, but it's acceptable. I'll explain that later on. You know, um, elder clowns dress for back in the day to what the dementia patient would remember in their childhood. You know, like what dad would wear, what mom would wear with the apron and so on. But we'll cover that in a little bit. My favorite clown. And the person, one of two clowns, who inspire me. This is Red Skelton, Freddy the Freeloader, the world famous hobo clown. There he is, folks. Now, if you're old enough to remember Red Skelton, he did people like Clem Cadiddle Hopper, Wee Whittle Boy, and of course, Freddy the Freeloader. Now, Freddy is a hobo. Hobo clowns are kind of like tramp clowns, but there's a bit of a difference. 
Okay, now here's a picture of me doing my hobo clown. Okay, it's kind of a side profile. I got my better side here. This is me working as a hobo clown. You notice I got a bit of a smile on. Uh, Red Skelton had a smile on. Whereas this famous clown, otherwise known as a tramp clown, is kind of the same, but there's a big difference. Okay, this is Otto Griebling, a famous, famous German clown, an awesome tramp clown. If any clown could make you feel pathos, Otto could. Here is your tramp clown, Otto Griebling. Now, isn't that a sad looking guy compared to the happy Freddy the Freeloader? That would be your difference. You have a hobo clown and you have a tramp clown. Now, the hobo clown, he might be having a hard time. As a matter of fact, he is having a hard time. He's homeless. He's kind of vagabonding. He's traveling. He's looking for his uh, next break. But he realizes that the road will come to an end and his break will be there. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So he's optimistic. Everything is beautiful. He'll find a flower on the side of the road. Ah, what a great day. What a great day. Oh, look at that. Half a can of beans. No, the tramp. Huh. A half empty can of beans. Yeah, the tramp clown's kind of a pessimist. You see, he's given up all hope. He's resigned himself to fate. Nothing is ever going to get better, so he's like down in the dumps. He's like the master of pathos. Oh boy, nothing's ever going to work. I might as well just keep moving on. Where the hobo is, hey, tomorrow's a brand new day. So let's have fun with the day and see what tomorrow brings, because it's going to get better. That's the difference. You got the smile to the whole moon, a frown to the tramp. Now, if you look at their costumes, they also speak to this. A hobo will have on a nice suit. It'll be a little bit rough. Might have a patch here or a patch there. Be a little bit wrinkled. Maybe there's a patch on the elbow. But it's kind of maintained. It's, it's holding itself together. Like Red Skelton would have a red and white striped scarf on there and he had his kind of busted down top hat. But he always had his air about him. I am. I am great. Everything is fine. We're getting by. Have a lovely day, folks. We're the tramp clown on the other end. His costume is all tatters. Now, if you've ever seen a picture of Emmett Kelly, world's most famous tramp clown, you'll notice that his costume was all shredded. It was just like shreds flying all over the place. His hat was all banged up and messed up and taped up. And he never smiled. He was always, he's given up hope. And that's your difference. So you have the hobo clown, happy, and you got the tramp clown, not so much. But they're the only two clowns that originated in North America. They are North American born. They are, are our clowns. But now you move on to, oh, a comedy duel. Has anybody ever seen Laurel and Hardy, Abbott and Costello? Hey, Abbott! Or, you know, oh, Ollie, that's another fine mess you've got me into. Those duos are also present within the circus. They're called white face clowns. Hey, I'm gonna take this topper off because it's getting a little bit warm. So, pardon the glow. Now, the white face clown duo consists of two kinds of white face clowns. You've got your neat white face and your grotesque white face. Now, the grotesque white face is completely different than the neat. Now, this is kind of a small picture, but this is your old school neat white clown. You see, that is a, a neat white face. You notice the small markings, completely covered in white, including the ears, the bald head, kind of refined looking. Okay. Now, I'll tell you the secret to this, because here is 
a white face, what we would call a grotesque white face. Notice the boffy hair, the bigger markings, kind of silly looking. And that plays into the whole scenario of things. If you remember Abbott and Costello and Laurel and Hardy and all them duos, one was a stray character and one was the kind of goofy character. Right? Stan Laurel. Oliver Hardy. See the difference? One is trying to be the quintessential um, educated artiste. Might come out playing the violin, doing a nice virtuoso, and all of a sudden, the grotesque white face is going to run into that ring with a bunch of lumber, hammer, and nails, and he's going to start building a chair. Why? Because in his simple mind, if I build a chair, I can sit down and watch the virtuoso. So while uh, the violin clowns are playing, that neat white face is just like right into his music, and all of a sudden, bangity, 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 hammer, hammer, hammer. And that neat white face is like, what in the world? Well, I just wanted to sit down and listen to you, so I thought I'd build myself a chair. You see the contrast? One plays off the other. The white face clown, if you get a good combination of a neat and a grotesque, you have some of the world's most hilarious clowning skits going. The big difference is... They never switch characters, okay? Now, the grotesque white face might kind of slide a little bit into the Auguste side of things, but not too much. We must maintain that full white face. Now, the markings will be a little bit bigger on the grotesque, a little bit more predominant to the eyebrows. Maybe the nose will be a little bit bigger, usually not too big. The odd time to get a full-size nose, but... If you notice the picture here, most white face clowns prefer a tip of the nose, a uh, prosthesis, or even just paint it on. So, now we've covered the white face clowns. Let's get to the Auguste, the clown we know the most. Now, you have two kinds of Auguste clowns I like to refer to. Okay, this to me is my prim and proper this is Uncle Albert. This is me in one of my characters. This is Uncle Albert, who was a scholarly gentleman with a scholarly past, but he's slowly losing it. Not too much, but just enough to be funny. You know what I'm saying? And then you have the playful Auguste. This is Terry. This is also me in another character. Notice the kind of funny hair. I'm still doing the tip on the nose, but I've got the muzzle for the mouth, you know, that big white thing here, and I got the eyebrows going. I'm a little bit more expressive in a circusy kind of way. Now, mind you, this clown might be found in a European circus. Part of that face is very reminiscent to uh, European clowning. And then you have the other Auguste, and I know quite a few of these folks, and they're fantastic. This is what you might see showing up. You'll see this in the circus, but you'll see this a lot at birthday parties as well. Okay, you got the big round nose, you got the uh, extended muzzle for the mouth and the eyebrows and all the bright colors. This is also an Auguste clown. That's a very friendly child's, child's clown. Enjoyable. But now, in modern times, things have changed a little bit. Not everybody wants to go into full makeup. So, believe it or not, there's a new category of clowns that's accepted in the World Clown Alley competitions. And there is clown competition. This is the Light Auguste. And I'll explain the difference, okay? Here's a picture of a Light Auguste clown. Now, in this picture, you'll notice that there's some makeup around the mouth and there's some makeup by the eyes and there's a nose on there, but the rest of the face is actually his own skin. 
minimal makeup, a little bit of blush. If you look closely, you'll see a bit of blush going down around where the muzzle would normally be. Normally this would be all white. But you're looking at a whole lot of um, skin showing. And uh, I believe in the competition, they're not, they're not even wearing jackets. They're like doing shirts and uh, pants and everything else. But you can check this out if you go check out Clown Alley competition. But that is Light of Goose. And this is becoming very popular. I actually enjoy doing Light of Goose because sometimes behind a full face of makeup, you can get pretty warm. Now, another genre of clowning, one that I'm actually um, beginning um, studies at Ryerson Polytech. Um, they have a caring clown course, caring clowns or elder clowns as they're also known specialize in therapeutic clowning in uh, retirement communities and uh, long-term care facilities. Now, this elder clown or caring clown stays away from the makeup and for the most part stays away from the flashy goose type costumes. What we try to do is to dress in the style of clothing that would jar some memories of our patients, which a lot of them are suffering from uh, dementia. Most of them are. So if we're dressed in old style clothing, something like maybe something father would wear or uncle would wear, or maybe grandma with her apron holding the string beans. Aprons are a very big part of uh, therapeutic clowning because everybody remembers mom's apron. Used to wipe away the tears and such. But that's it. We put on the clown nose and it's not so much to go in there and pop off some magic and whatever and be the entertainer. Therapeutic clowning is more of being the friend and helping your client open up to you. Okay? It's to make them feel better, to make them the star, to jog their memories, to get them talking to you, to bring back, you know, to get a rapport going. So you might talk about what um, it was like to go to that um, little red schoolhouse at the end of the road and down the country road, or um, what it was like to um, shuck peas with grandma on the back porch, or help dad cut firewood. Because you know, they were still doing it back in the 40s and even into the 50s. And most of our seniors now are sitting, you know, they were born during the 40s and the 50s. Then you have therapeutic clowning, okay, or hospital clowning, if you wish to call it. There's quite a few titles, medical clowning, clown doctors. And these are clowns that are also therapeutic clowns, but they work within a hospital environment or a children's um, rehabilitation center, such as Holland Bluer View here in the city of Toronto. Excellent facility, excellent clown program. And they're dealing with children predominantly, but also with some adults, okay, where the elder clowns, also um, elder clowning is uh, in Sunnybrook Healthcare Center, where a lot of our veterans, you know, from the wars are, and the uh, elder clowns help them as well. So there's therapeutic clowning, and now that is a totally different genre, and I'll dedicate a whole video to that at the end of this course. But to give you an idea of the difference, here's a couple of therapeutic clowns, and I believe this is uh, taken at Sunnybrook. You notice uh, the costumes are time era sensitive. We have the noses, but we're shy of the makeup because the idea is not to shock the patient. The idea is to build a rapport and to become friends with the patient so that they will hopefully open up and enjoy some memories and bring a smile to their face. I am so looking forward. I am so stoked. My first um, Caring Clown class starts on November the 21st, one day before my 63rd birthday. 63? Go figure. So clowning isn't just for young folks and it isn't just for old folks. It is for everybody across the spectrum. So there's some of your clowning that you can think about. Okay, now We've gone through the different makeups and such. Um, let's see, the grotesque. Okay, here's what I want to do. We already covered grotesque white face and neat white face. We understand the straight clown to the, 
the, the uh, silly clown. We understand the Auguste as being the absolute buffoon, pratfallen clown, also birthday clown and such. So we understand all that makeup. But now what we got to think about is after showing you some of those pictures, what, what is in your mind? That you, what kind of clown would you like to be? Would you like to be the tramp? Or, you know, the sad tramp, the happy hobo, you know, the happy-go-lucky bumbling the goose, the straight white face with a little bit of panache, or the grotesque white face with a little bit of the, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah, right, okay. What's inside you? How do you discover that? You know, I want to eat you to start thinking about who you are. Yeah, that's right. You need to understand who you are as a people so that you can understand who you are as a clown. You see, it's not about the clown you want to be, but it's who you are. Your characteristics, your personal characteristics that, are, that make you funny, that are funny, um, that make you sad, that excite you, any artistic abilities you have, love for different kinds of music, Maybe your love of dance. What I need you to do is I need you to rediscover all those things you used to enjoy as a child. Whether it's swinging on the swings, chasing butterflies, maybe playing guitar. I don't know. What made you shine as a child that might be missing now? So rediscover that bright-eyed, playful kid you believe is long gone. Because i got a beautiful surprise for you, folks. That child is not gone. He's just been covered by life responsibilities and the weight of adulthood. We've kind of locked him away so we can deal with the harsh realities of growing up. But did we really do ourselves a service? You know, when we listened to that person that said, you know, you need to start acting your age. And you went, uh-huh, I'm going to start. That was the day you started to lose. So I need you to get inside yourself. I need you to find that inner child. I need you to sit back a little bit, close your eyes, and remember a beautiful day with your grandfather fishing on the lake or in the pond. Or a nice sunny afternoon listening to your grandmother whistle while she was getting dinner ready. Maybe something funny happened like when I put a frog in my mother's washing machine. That to me was hilarious. But some memory that makes you smile and brings you back to a beautiful day when you were a child and you were living carefree. Once you reach that point and once you get that feeling, that beautiful childlike feeling within you, you're going to smile. I want you to hold that smile. You know, hold it and say, Hey, where you been? You know, little Willie, I haven't seen you in 30 years. I'm glad you're back. Let's play. Let's have some fun. Let's show people who we really are. Now, once that kid's back up, and you start acknowledging that kid without getting yourself thrown into the loony bin, but enjoying the childlike aspect of your adulthood, because it's still there. You can still enjoy your childlike ways as long as you meet your responsibilities, but it doesn't have to be all down and out. You can go swing on a swing in a park if you want. Bounce the ball, doesn't matter. I'm going to give you a challenge in a minute. But first of all, you know, once you've got that memory in there, you found the birthplace of your clown. That's your inner child. That's where all your hidden smiles and laughters and giggles and beautiful days are still there to enjoy. Once you bring those out, you'll be on your way to discovering the clown you were destined to be. Even if it's the tramp clown with, oh dear, oh my, oh me. There's humor in pathos. Maybe that's the best way you can bring a smile to somebody. I don't know. You're going to have to work that one out for yourself. Now, let's get back to our assignment. So I've got you thinking about your childhood, and you're getting an idea of 
just who you think your clown's going to be. But you can't create a character without having a history. So your assignment, once you pick one of the clowns, whether it be the neat white face, grotesque white face, tramp, hobo, a goose, it doesn't matter. Okay? Even a no-makeup, red-nosed, therapy-style clown. doesn't matter. Pick something that seems to work for you. Then I want you to get a pen and a paper. I want you to write at least, at least, oh, two or three pages minimum. A mini biography of who your clown is. Oh, I know, that sounds weird. But without your clown biography, you'll never understand the character that your clown is. You won't understand that your inner clown is a different entity from your outward human. So we need to have a biography. You know, if you're the hobo clown, for instance, where were you born? Did you come from like the southern states, uh, eastern Ontario? Are you from New York? Where were you born? Where did you come from? What did you do as a profession before the depression hit? Before you ended up riding the rails, looking for a new start. What happened prior to you becoming that hobo? And what is it in your life that keeps you looking for that light at the end of the tunnel? Or vice versa. What is it that has you so down that you've given up hope? Know who your clown is. If you're the Auguste, same thing. Where do you come from? What silly things do you like to do? What did you do as a kid? Do you have any brother and sister clowns? Create an autobiography of your clown. Think of a name. We'll cover that in a little bit. But think of a name. Give your clown a name. So write the autobiography. Put a name to the autobiography. And then lastly, I want you to grab some crayons. You know, crayons are an amazing thing. They don't taste so good. I learned that in school but they can be very creative. Take some crayons or some coloring pencils and draw a colored picture of what you believe your clown face should look like. Now, you don't have to get it right the first time. You could do it 20 times. Keep working at your clown face. Even if you have to go online and get some clown face ideas, just don't steal somebody else's clown face. You can take a little bit of Joey's, a little bit of Susan's, a little bit of Robert's. You can take little pieces of different clown faces and make a collage that blends into your clown. Not their clown, but your clown. Once you have that face and that autobiography, the last challenge is, and I don't know if anybody will take me up on it, but every dollar store has got little foam clown noses. I want you to get one or two of these little clown noses and I want you to keep one in your pocket till the next time we get together. And occasionally, just out of the blue, I want you to let go of all adult restriction. I want you to reach into your pocket, pop that nose on, grab a notebook and a, and a pen or a pad and a pen and watch people's reactions when they see you with the clown nose on and make notes of the reactions. Maybe do something funny like going, hi, or hey. Acknowledge the people, make them acknowledge the clown and see what the reaction is. Guaranteed you're gonna get a lot of laughs and giggles. You might get a couple of uh, like, what is going on here? But that's still a reaction, you can work with that. Take notes of how your clown nose affects other people, how much joy it'll bring in. Thereby, you're also going to be starting to get comfortable with your clown character. You know, I think that's enough for today. I'm going to end this video. I hope I've given you some things to think about. I really hope you'll continue following this course. I promise you everything I've learned in 40 years I'm going to put on video. If it works for you, I am going to be so happy. I'm sure it will. But you are going to have to do the work. Communicate with me. I'm here to help you out. Until then, enjoy your homework. Enjoy your assignments. 
The next video should be up within the next four days. I'm just going to get through the weekend. So look for Monday, which I believe is the 21st, Canadian Voting Day. Don't forget out to go out and vote. Anyhow, until then, happy clowning. And remember one thing, a good clown motto, an ounce of love can cure a ton of heartache. So go out there and be a doctor. Share the love. Cheers.